champagne flute. I'm fucking breathing the bastard. Yeah, I know I look ridiculous. <laughs> yeah, yeah, dude. Hey, my friend, close your eyes, please. But I need no stories, it's one story. What is the story? What is the story? Hey shit biscuit! I was wondering when you're gonna join me for my uh, my Friday afternoon in a bar dressed as Deadpool. So hey, uh, I just want to see the, the the new Deadpool movie, which was about as much fun as a sandpaper dildo. That's also one of the jokes from the movie. But um, I absolutely love the movie. Like it was filthy, it was full of fighting and death and bad language and fucks and pussies and all that kind of shit that I love. You also got to see breasts in the movie, which is always a bonus. Now, the, the fun thing is, the thing that I took away from, the, from the, the whole story wasn't the fact that it was hilarious or he looked like a testicle with teeth. None of that stuff, but the character in it, um, Ryan Reynolds' character, Wade Wilson, is an ex-army ranger or some kind of ex-special forces, actually. Special forces is the one. And he gets cancer. And it's kind of really, really developed cancer, like really, I think it's like stage five or something, he's gonna die. And he gets the opportunity to have treatment that will save him, but will also make him indestructible. So he goes for that option. And, and they take him to this facility, they lock him away, and they mentally and physically just annihilate him. Like they do every experiment, every torture method known to man, and they find him hard to break. But why do they need to break him? Well. The, the, the mutation to make him indestructible and to cure his cancer will not happen until his body kind of gives up. So they keep pushing his body, they keep pushing his body until it, it pretty much breaks down and shuts down and says, okay, now it mutates. So there's a very deep lesson in that. There's a very deep lesson in that. And I know I'm dressed as fucking Deadpool in a morph suit, drinking out of a, a, a champagne glass that has nothing in it with a plastic champagne glass that's also empty and a glass filled with warm tap water. So it's pretty hard for you to take me seriously right now, but the message is quite profound. How much does it have to hurt? How much do you have to suffer physically, mentally, and emotionally? How deep into the fucking pits? How deep into this like cesspit of darkness and dark thoughts and pain and stress and over how deep do you have to go before you simply reach out with your fucking hand hopefully not in that homosexual way hopefully not in a morph suit but how hard does it have to get before you ask for help August 2014, I stood on the edge of that cliff, no shit, this is not your typical story but I stood on the edge of that cliff thinking I've had enough of this shit, like what is the point?
in any of this? Am I just a hindrance? I'm just getting in people's way. I'm fucking horrible to be around. Like, I can't deal with this pain. I can't deal with this stress. I can't deal with these expectations. I can't deal with this overwhelm. And I should just go away. That was the thing I used to say to my wife all the time. And that cliff up there, my wife stood in front of me, begging me not to jump off and to think about my kids. That was a huge turning point for me. See, I'd, I'd gone, the, the previous two years are almost a blur to me because they were so tough. I choose them to be tough. I built this big business, I'd had all this success, yet inside I was dying and I was fucking empty. Like, empty. I felt this nothingness. Something was, something inside was missing despite having all of this kind of external excess, ex, this external success even. Internally, there was fucking nothing. And whatever it was, was dying. Like literally the fire had been extinguished. And I'm not even sure how I got there. I'm not even sure how I got to this position of pure pain. Like I felt like I was in a pit of darkness and there was no light anymore. I felt like I was drowning in a sea of negative thoughts. And I didn't even know how to swim. And if we're gonna use a swimming analogy, I felt like I was swimming with my clothes still on, like <gasps> just locked in a struggle. Despite on the outside looking like I had it all together. The truth of the matter is, my friend, I was a fucking liar. And that might sound a strange thing to admit, but I'd have you consider that you're a liar too. But I get it. I get it. After all, what kind of man expresses his feelings? What kind of man admits that he's struggling when he can mask it with booze, he can mask it with drugs, he can mask it with humor? And I still get caught in this sometimes too. We can mask it with porn, we can mask it with money, we can mask it with holidays and toys. And that's the easy bit. But at some point, like me, you may get to the place I call the pit, where it's almost a moment of fuck it. I cannot continue like this. I can't continue to live like this. And all of the voices in your head are telling you to fucking give up. And the help that you do get and the people that you do reach out to and the advice that you seem to seek online is full of think positively. Think fucking positively. Really? Think positively. Get around people. Exercise. I'm like, exercise? The last thing I want to do is fucking exercise because if I leave the house, I'll tear someone's fucking head off. That might just be me. But I suspect it's not. So maybe you're in a position where business is going well, but you hate it. You've built a life of lies. You've built a life that you can't stand anymore. You have a relationship with your wife that, let's face it, you're not really getting laid. You're starting to think about going elsewhere. You may be addicted to porn. It's cool, bro, I get it. Dude, here's what I do know. If you're thinking about going elsewhere, how do you think your fucking wife feels? You're coming home every night from work, pissing and moaning at her, unloading onto her, not even asking how her fucking day went, expecting your dinner on a table, expecting to get laid. It's fucking insanity to me, but that's the life that I lived. And as far as kids go, maybe you're one of those dads that is super dad, I don't know. But if you're anything like I was, you get home and the kids do nothing but fucking annoy you, so you stay at the office a little bit longer. You piss around. Fuck around on Facebook. Can't wait for the weekend to come so you can have a drink with the boys and escape home. Maybe you're sick of having your body the way it is, in pain all the time, fucking snoring, waking up like feeling like a bag of shit. Needing coffee just to get through the fucking morning. And just going through this ground, grind, I, I, I'm kind of like, this is how I was. And the best description I can give you is like a fucking zombie. Living dead. And it took me standing on the edge of that cliff there 
my wife in front of me, begging me not to do it, reminding me about the two kids that I had at home, to say, almost like this, please sir, can I have some help? The problem was, where the fuck do we go for help as modern men? Like, where are we going to go? To a fucking life coach? Who's going to tell us to think positively? Bless their hearts. But for a man like me and a man like you, a life coach telling me to think positively, build a vision board, and fucking manifest shit, it's almost laughable to a man like me and a man like you. What I needed was someone to slap me across the face. Someone to give me a reality check. Show me what I had. Show me what I could lose. Call me out on my own bullshit. Call me out on the stories that I told about how it was, about how I was different, about how my town was different, about how my business was different, about how my bipolar was different. And that man was Garrett J. White. And when I first saw him, I was like, who's this dickhead? He's triggering the shit out of me right now. What he was doing was holding the mirror, maybe like I am right now. Ironic. Call me out of my shit, and then I travel all the way to Laguna Beach. You're going to see that trip pretty soon, actually. But I travel all the way to Laguna Beach, and this sounds weird, but I travel all the way there to get punched in the face repeatedly. Until I finally realized that the shit that I built, I built. Nobody else did it. Shit didn't happen to me. I was responsible for everything that I created, but this is beautiful, right? Here's the beauty in this, right? If I can create this shit, almost unconsciously, because I don't know I've created, if I can create this unconsciously, then surely I have the power to create whatever the fuck I want. Think about that. If I can unconsciously create this shit, and build this shit that I hate, this pit, if I can unconsciously go there, then what would happen if I consciously committed to changing th shit, to changing things, to changing the way that I operate? Consciously. Imagine what I could create and commit to that. So what I'm really saying is, dude, is how much does it have to hurt you how much does it have to hurt for you to reach out for help? How many times do you have to wake up with another fucking hangover to see enough? How many times do you have to go in the shower and not be able to see your dick? How many times do you not have to be able to get it up with your wife? And I shouldn't joke about this, but this is the reality. How many times do you have to lose your temper with your kids? How many times do you have to skip your little boy's football practice? Breaks me fucking heart that I used to do that. How many times did your wife have to sit at home eating dinner on her own again? How many times do you have to lose your temper, lose your shit, lose your cool amidst all the fucking chaos that's going on around you? And it's, if it's not now, when is it? I could throw a whole lot of pain your way right now. Like I could throw the scenarios that will pop up like it did for me. If shit doesn't change right now. And guess what, dude? Here's the thing. I have nothing to sell you right now. Nothing. There is nothing to buy here. I am not leading up to a pitch. What I am leading up to is... If not now, when? So dude, if not now, when? See, one of the biggest challenges we have as modern men is this, this, it's kind of the polar, polar opposite we have over here, we have boredom. And you know what happens when you're bored, right? You do stupid shit, you look for ways to mess shit up. You search for suffering, you search for struggle. I do. I almost look for ways to sabotage all the shit that's going right because I think that I don't deserve it. So over here we have boredom. Over here is his friend, burnout. Now this is the point where we're working so hard, we're hustling so hard, we're pushing so hard, we're partying so hard. I think dickheads call it burning the candle at both ends. 
and grinding. Over here is burnout. Over here is boredom. The sweet spot is sweet spot is right between. Right between here. This is where the biggest growth is. Boredom, stupid shit. Looking for the self-destruct button. Burnout, guaranteed self-destruct. So dude, you can choose your fucking poison. But what I do know is that over here is insanity. And over here, burnout, funnily enough, is... Look at that up there. Sorry, dude. <laughs> Sorry, dude. Fucking hell. That looks dope as fuck, doesn't it? Shit. Sorry, dude. <laughs> So what I'm saying again is this, right, like, if not now, when? How much does it have to hurt? How much do you have to struggle? How many times do you have to say, fuck this shit? Because, dude, it's boring. I got bored of hearing my own voice. Imagine all the people around me fucking felt of me saying, oh, I've had enough of this. So I'm like a little pussy, honestly. I'm almost horrified at the way I went on, but that's where I learned the deepest lessons when I was in that hole. Saying, I've had enough of this. But honestly, how many... Is it going to be when you burn your business to the ground again? Like I did. Is it going to be when you burn another relationship? Is it going to be when you burn another bridge? Thank you.